What it do, it's your girl DJ Callie Royce. We are here in H-Town at Faces, and I got one of the hottest of the hot in the building right now, Fat Man Scoop in Thank the building. Thank you, appreciate you. Thank you for having yes, me sir. come through. I, lo I love it. Yes, sir. Well, we are here at Hip Hop Streets. You know, we got the banner in the back. Y'all make sure y'all go follow us, hiphopstreets.com. We got to sit down and talk to this guy. You are a living legend, man. You know, over the years, I've looked up to you a lot. Thank you, I, I appreciate that, like, you know, I always say it in, in everything that I talk about, I never considered myself a legend. Um, I just really started kind of accepting that. I always just thought I was a dude that was lucky enough to do this on a high level for many years. Um, I stumbled into this. I was a rapper. I was signed to uh, Teddy Riley. That didn't work. I went to, to Diddy at the time, who was Puff, and I was going to sign and be the first Notorious B.I.G. I didn't want to do that, it didn't feel right in my soul. And I, you know, I got into the music industry and and um was working at uh, Hot 97. And you know, I worked at, I worked a record label job, so I was the guy who made uh made got GT, uh uh Steve Nice, or a Mad Hatter, all these wow. dudes to play my records when I worked for Tommy Boy Records and I was doing fine. I think where I became legendary, as people say, is when I made those records. Right. And, no, and those records were to put my brother through Hampton University. Wow. That's it. There was no other reason I did it. I would have never had a reason to do it. And um, put him through the Hampton University. He came out after four years. He was on the road with me, doing, doing his thing with me. And then um, he decided to be an intern. He went to work for Def Jam Records. I first at TVT with my man Theo Brown, and he went to um, Dev Jam, made his own name with his partner Steve Carlos. They both left. Steve went to run Jeezy, CTE. My wow. brother went to run Maybach Music as the president of Maybach. Uh, did that for five years, and now he is the head of black music at Arista Records. So, wow. I mean, Congratulations to yeah, him, yeah, for yeah, sure. Young Sab, shout out to my little brother, Young Sab. The only reason that this ever even happened is because I was just trying to put him through, through school. So I said, I was taught by Dougie Fresh. I was taught crowd participation by Dougie Fresh because I was a young artist in Harlem. And th those were our people, th those were our mentors. And one day I just figured out, how am I gonna make a record to put him through college? And I said, yo, if I make, if I make a record and I do a show for $500, if I do 100 shows, I could put him through college. Wow. And for, for one year and then, I mean, I, of course, I wound up making more than 500 a show, and um, it took me all over the world for 28 years. So God put His hand on that whole situation because I was doing the right thing, and and in that in, in all of that, I became quote unquote legendary. So I accept it now. I just it, it is what it is. I'm glad you accept it because as soon as I heard your name, I was like, this is big. This is huge. I mean, um, I started doing a little bit of radio, but listening to your vocals on songs mm -hmm. and tracks, like it's inspiring. So uh, having that distinctive voice over the years, like can you tell us, for those who haven't traveled the world, maybe what's one of the places that you went where you was like, man, you know, ain't nothing like this. Um, I've, been to, I've been to over 200 countries in this world. I wow. mean, Kazakhstan, uh, Use medicine, uh, Ukraine, wow. uh, uh, parts of Brazil that are crazy. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> of course, China. Yeah. You know, China is the best place in the world to party. Period. Yes. People think that it's a bunch of communist sharecroppers. It's not. Nah, People they party. are balling. They, they party. balling. They balling hard, and, and and they going hard. So, um, I mean, I've been a little bit of everywhere. You know, um, I'm just trying to think of what place did I ever say, like... What was, like, your you, favorite, though? Oh, um, China is my favorite. China, yeah. Because um, in China, they just have a different level of respect for you. Mm -hmm. um, the, they do everything big, mm -hmm. and there's a million people in the club. Yep. So, you have to understand, they have the most people in the world. Yeah. So, when you see a project in China, think of, like, if you ever saw The Matrix and you saw, like, just... a when they were doing, the, they had the people connected to the matrix. It was like rows and rows of like. Yes. That's how the projects are out there. It's like goes to infinity, and they just party and they have a good time. A lot of people have a lot of respect. 
They show you love. They jump up and down. They might not even know the fucking words, but right. they but they but they, they just engage they, they engage like, in that <laughs> shit. Yeah. Uh, my favorite place is my 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 fav- one of my favorite places is Italy. Ooh. Amalfi Coast because I love Italian food and pizza. I'm I'm a black person. I'm a black man, but inside you Italian. I'm Italian inside. Yeah. And then I think uh uh, Anchorage, Alaska is one of my favorite places because I love snow yeah. and and rain and like cold weather. So those are like my favorite places. So for an aspiring uh, MC or a person that hosts or that wants to get their brand out there, I mean, like, what would you tell the younger generation? Because some of us, some of us have questions about what all you've touched in, in your lifetime. But what would you tell us? You know what I'm saying? Coming up and how to go out here and grind. Oh, it's, it's simple. You got to, first of all, you got to put God first in everything you do, right? All right, that's cool. We know that. Um, I I can't speak for nobody else but myself. Yeah. I put God first. Number two is you got to put in the work. See, people think that you do something and it's supposed to be okay. My man called me, a a kid that's an up and coming rapper. He called me, said, yo, man, can you support me? Um, you know, I've been dropping freestyles for a month every week. I said, man, what are you talking about? You've you been dropping freestyles for oh, every week for three months? What's that? You got to do this consistency, consistently over and over and over and over and over. And, and you might not do it with people looking. The question is, the question is for all of you, can you do this consistently when the lights ain't on? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna give you two great examples of that. There's a guy named Detroit D. Period U. Period S. Period T. Detroit Dust. He is a, um, a self defense guy, mm-hmm. and he just kept putting videos out of how to, you know, turn people's arms and stuff like that. And um, I, 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 I got up on him pretty early. Because I, because I practice a little bit, and I was like, "Yo, this is dope. What you doing? Boom, boom, boom. Nobody paying attention. This is in 20, 20, 2019, 2020. 800 followers, 900 followers, 1600 followers, 22,000 followers. Right? Okay. Keep going. He didn't stop. Two weeks ago, for some reason, people started making, they started making fun of him, and they would have videos with showing what he was doing. Well, then it would be, in, the person would be in heaven. Because it was like a gun, <laughs> and they would be like, "Turn it this way," and he'd be like, "And, next and they want to be heaven. They want to be heaven, right? <laughs> okay, so they making fun of him, right? Then, next thing you know, he was doing some. He, he said he embraced it. He said, "Yo, I'm gonna do some, some um videos with these people." Next thing you know, he's on, he's on, he's on, um, he's on Saturday Night Live. Wow. I turned around, hundred hundred sixty thousand followers. Whoa, that's consistency. Another one, D Nice. Oh, D Nice okay. is my man for many years. I know D Nice since 1990, 89, right? There was a time in D Nice's career he couldn't even get in the club. Nobody rocking with him. Nobody dealing with him. He wound up DJing in the white clubs because the black black clubs would be like, "Yo, man, you can't come in." He was a photographer. He got rid of. He stopped doing everything. He was working slowly, doing his thing. Opportunity gets the D Nice minute. Now he's doing four commercials. Wow. Third example, earn your leisure. They're they're a um they're a financial uh, a team of financial uh, guys. People who do real estate. MG the mortgage guy. Uh, Wall Street trapper. Ian the master investor. Uh, uh, Rashad and Troy. All these guys doing their thing. I am Ash Cash. Truck and hustle. All these guys are part of this thing. They started out doing this. What black people want to hear about financial shit? They don't. They don't. They just they want. They, they just want the Rolls. They just want the man. They want the Rolls Royce, right? <laughs> right. So now they they going uphill trying to push that, right? Mm-hmm. It's cool. I catch them. If the pandemic happens, I catch them in in March of 2020. I'm saying, okay. I see what you're doing. Boom, boom, boom. Keep hitting. Starting to get stronger. Starting to get stronger. Now they get they selling out conferences. 15, 200, two. 20,000, pe- uh, 2,000 people coming to their thing, same, same guy, big business, same kind of guy, do the same kind of thing. Then they get a deal with, with, with Revolt. Now they interviewing Rick Ross. Now they doing that. Now they selling out the Apollo. 
it never happens in a day. If you're not committed to doing the work in the dark, this is not it's for not you. Gonna be no idea. It's not for you. Those are three good examples and you need to go investigate all of them. Because you guys want the work without doing the work. Facts. You want you want the Jay-Z without being without. in the mud. It, it don't work like that. You gotta go get it out the mud. You gotta go get it out the mud. <laughs> Okay, so personal question, and I got I always get personal on some of my interviews. Okay, good, you sure. But um, for you being a um, a person of your caliber and working so hard, do you ever have time for family? And did you ever make like, did you have time for like, I know you got your brother, but what about like kids or stuff like that? And do you ever go back and think like, man, oh, I, work took away from that? Biggest regret I have in my life over everything. It's me not being with my kids. So I have two kids. My my, my my daughter's 20 and my son is 27. Hey kids. Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 my kids are older now. But when I was out there doing what I needed to do, they were at home. Now I was in I was in Tokyo. I was in London. I was doing this now in my mind I'm saying I'm putting you guys in a $1.7 million house. Yeah. You got a BMW you ride in. You got you got a 750 you ride in. You got a you got a Range Rover you ride in. The minivan is the, is the truck when you go. I mean the car when you go do this and this. But it did not replace me being, being there. Being present. And yeah. you know something? They had they had a lot of resentment, anim, resentment, resentment and animosity towards me. And you think that you're really doing your thing. But if you're not there for your kids, it don't mean nothing to them. It, it don't matter what, you, they could be in the biggest, the biggest thing, the biggest house, house whatever. Bar, yeah. It don't mean nothing. And to this day, I'm just starting to repair my, my oh, relationship with my kids. Cause you wanna know something? I took care of them. I put my son, in the midst of the financial crisis, my son had to go to a school that cost 175000 for 13 months. I did that shit. Wow. But you wanna know something? The money didn't mean nothing because I wasn't there. Yeah. So, as, I, as they get older, kids get wings. Yeah. And then they confront you about all that shit. You weren't there, you weren't there. To the point that I used to argue and fight with my kids. To the point it got so bad, none of them, neither one of them really want to have nothing to do with me. Where everything changed is when I almost died when I had COVID, when I was in the hospital in April of, of this year. That made them realize my dad might not be here. Wow. Now they, now that they're getting older, they understand the amount of sacrifice it takes for you to live at that level. So, I had to explain to them, you work part-time at, let's pick a place, Target. In order for you to, in order for you to live in this house that costs $4,700, just the rent, you have to live at Target. Mm -hmm. I, that means you don't go home. You'd actually have to live there for the entire month and you still wouldn't make just the rent. Let's not talk about those cars. Let's not talk about heat, gas, electric, food. You want clothes? None of that. It's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge responsibility to have kids, but they don't understand until the they sacrifice. get older what the sacrifice yeah. is there. Okay? With that being said, I realized even though I was doing big things and making it comfortable for them, they weren't emotionally comfortable. Yeah. And that was my biggest, that's been my biggest regret, is not, yeah, did I make money? Did I send them on vacation? Did they get whatever they want? You turn around, you're getting hit in the face with a PlayStation. What, where the home, where'd that come from? But it don't mean nothing. Yeah. So how would you tell them the time balance as a, as a, as a culture? Just, just, I mean, men-wise in general, even women too, but how would you tell them the time balance with that, with well, having I, those kids? I, I'll tell you this. You can only do it if you're really rich like Puff, like Diddy, where you have people that can do, that can make it easy for you, and your kids don't have to be in school. They can be on the road with you. Yeah. But that's, that, that does not happen a lot of the time. All you can do is the best you can do. Yeah. If you want to be in this business, 
whether you want to be an athlete, let me even make it simple. If you want to be the best at whatever the hell you want to do in your field, interviewer, booking agent, club promoter, uh, 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 cameraman, if you want to be at the top of whatever, you cannot have kids. Here's why. Because the minute you have kids, you have now made, you have now committed to something. If you really want to go to the top, it's got to be a laser focus. Yeah. Why is Oprah at the top? Her whole shit was being Oprah. It wasn't involving with kids or nothing. No disrespect, but kids slow you down. Yeah. Now, I never would take back my kids. I love my kids. Yeah. We had an yeah. argument about that. Because I would say, what's my biggest regret? Having kids. No, it's not. But, but, but I didn't understand what I was doing.